Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Welcome back to our channel, or welcome. I hope you guys are loving the content that we're putting out there. Um, sorry for being busy, we've been away for quite a long time, but bear with us. We're back now, so yeah, well, I'm back now. So, yeah, uh, welcome to our new subscribers, welcome to our uh, people that have stuck with us from the beginning to now and yeah you guys just feel free to suggest anything that you want us to react to down below and i personally will be more than glad to react to it feel free to reach us on facebook feel free to reach out on um instagram or funny and jesse and just yeah let's have fun let's become friends and yeah so today i'm going to be reacting to can muslims keep non-muslims as friends, Dr. Zaki Nae. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. And there's a verse in the Quran, which many of the Muslims, they misunderstand. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 144, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe, take not for awliya, the unbelievers, in preference to the believers. And many of the translations, they translate the Arabic word awliya as friends. So the translation reads that, O oh, you who believe, do not take for friends unbelievers in preference to believers. Which I feel it's a wrong translation. The correct translation is the word awliya should be translated as someone who's a protector. So the right translation is that, Ya ayyuhal lazin amanu, O you who believe, do not take for protectors, unbelievers, in preference to believers. Do not take for protectors, non-Muslims, in preference to Muslims. And the same message is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 57 and 58. That, O oh, you who believe, do not take for friends and protectors, those who make a mockery of religion or take it as a sport. That means all those non-Muslims who take your deen as a mockery or as a sport, do not keep friendship with them nor go to them for protection. These verses of the Quran are very clear. But otherwise, keeping acquaintanceship with a non-Muslim, keeping normal friendship with a non-Muslim is no problem at all. Under normal circumstances, we should treat the non-Muslims with justice and kindness. In fact, I say we should go a step further so that they're impressed with our religion, they're impressed with our deen. And you can find several examples in the life history of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Several. You can give a talk only on giving examples how the Prophet dealt with the non-Muslims. And many of us are aware of that incidence where a non-Muslim he enters the mosque of the Prophet and he urinates. The Sahabas are irritated. They want to teach the non-Muslim a lesson but the Prophet he stops them and he says be calm. Get some water and wash the floor. That's it. We know of the famous incidents. Whenever Prophet Muhammad used to walk there was a non-Muslim lady who used to throw dirt on the Prophet every day. Whenever we used to walk, the non-Muslim lady used to throw dirt. One day, when the Prophet walks below the house of that non-Muslim lady, no dirt falls on him. So he's surprised. He goes to a house to find out why was no dirt thrown today. And he realizes that she was sick and he prays for a shifa. And that non-Muslim lady, she's so impressed with the Prophet that she accepts Islam. We have the example in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad that there was a Jew by the name of Zaid. The Prophet had borrowed some money from him. But before the time was due, that Jew, he comes to the Prophet and he demands for the money back. And he's rude. He speaks rudely to the Prophet that give my money back. And the time was not yet up. Hadith Umar 
he gets angry and he says, Oh, enemy of God, had it not been for the treaty between the Muslims and the Jews, I would have chopped off your head for speaking to the Prophet like that. Hazrat Umar, we know that he was a man of justice. He gets irritated. How could someone speak to the Prophet of Allah like that? The Prophet immediately intervenes and he tells Hazrat Umar that be calm. And he tells Hazrat Umar that give this Jew his money back and add to it the amount of 20 gallons because you frightened him. Because Hazrat Umar frightened him, the man did not have the right to ask the money because the time wasn't yet up. The time wasn't due. Yet because Hazrat Umar he frightened that non-Muslim, the Prophet said besides giving the money back to him, add 20 gallons worth because he had frightened the Jew. And Alhamdulillah, the Jew is impressed with the behavior of the Prophet and he accepts Islam. So generally, the Muslims should be kind and just to the non-Muslims. We have to be the right example so that they'll realize we are the followers of the religion of peace. A Muslim is a person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as far as general dealing is concerned, we have to be kind and just. But there is a caution which I always mention in my talk whenever I'm dealing with this topic that keeping non-Muslim friends is no problem as long as you are having an influence on that non-Muslim. If it's the vice versa, then there is a danger. If the non-Muslim friend is having a greater influence on you, then there is a problem. Because whenever there is a relationship between two human beings, and when you keep on meeting very often, no one can tell me that nothing happens. Either you are influencing him or he is influencing you. You can't say that nothing is happening. So if you are having influence on him, Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, continue the relationship so that he understands the deen al-haq, the religion of Islam better. But if he's having an influence on you, then be careful, you may follow his path, which may be wrong. So here, if it's a relationship in which your deen is in danger, then I feel you have to discontinue that relationship. You have to be careful. The Quran is very clear. As far as protection is concerned, if there are two options, believer and unbeliever, a believer is preferable at all times. The verse says, do not take unbelievers for protectors in preference to believers. So as far as your deen is not in danger, and if you are having an influence on the non-Muslim, Alhamdulillah. And I, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have hundreds of non-Muslim friends. MashaAllah, hundreds, Hindus, Christians, many. And almost all that I know, they respect me, MashaAllah. They know that I'm a Dai, I speak about the religion. Yet, Alhamdulillah, they respect me. So as long as you are having influence on them, it's very good. Um, it's a very interesting video. But then this is someone trying to, he's actually trying to interpret what exactly that passage or verse says. What, but it's good that someone can come out here and actually clarify what something means. But also at the end of the day, people will choose to believe what they want to believe. Choose what you read and take it as it is. Or have some someone actually explain to you what it's supposed to mean also i love at the end where he talks about he's got friends out of the religion that actually respect him i personally throughout this video when i was watching this video i was thinking what about when you have mutual respect i don't have influence over you you don't have influence over me I respect what you believe and I let you be. You respect what I believe and you let me be. We don't have to be close friends, no. I don't have to have influence over you when it comes to religion, no. Or 
lifestyle no and you don't have to have influence on me just mutual respect nothing other than that no one is stepping over anyone's boundaries or disrespecting the other person but at some point of course we find ourselves in uh, situations where maybe if not lifestyle other parts of our lives then religion has like that center role and has a big meaning to us hence when we find friends we want to put it out there we want to put our beliefs out there we want to talk about it want to share ideas want to do this and that um i understand i really really do understand so then what happens next are you supposed to say um this person is always talking about the, their religion i'll pull away from them always find or rather choose to be friends with people that you've got common interest with many of us have friends each one of them is not someone we can chill with or hang around with because of the kind of person they are or we are do you understand you choose not everyone is that close of a friend every friend has like a certain level of friendship that exists between us if it's making sense hence i don't know i'm i'm, I'm trying to think because i don't think like the conversations jesse and i would have i can have with uh certain people in my life that's just for us who understand each other on that level the conversations my sister and i have also are just for us you understand the conversations i may have with uh maybe my closest friend is not something i can have with these other two that i've mentioned there's always that differentiate differentiating factor otherwise i feel like we should be accommodating to anyone despite their religion um see humans don't see religion see and have respect just respect people out there you don't if they decide to insult you move away from those people because those people are not by insulting you i mean like maybe tarnish um your culture what you believe in your religion move away from them you don't have to have that negative energy around you that's why sometimes that's something common ground will make you uh, sit with the people that you can relate with i hope it makes sense let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video